Did they tell you we were going to record this? Is that okay? Sure. I was organized the, the tapes and stuff, and you could just tell us who you are. Okay. I'm G. William Domhoff. I'm a research professor in psych. During, when we go into REM sleep, there's also a little part of the brain um, down in the brain stem that essentially says you can't move. You can't, you're paralyzed. You can make little fluttery movements and your eyes can move. But basically, we're, uh, uh, our muscle, muscles are flaccid or you can say, uh, you know, we're paralyzed in a certain way. Is that we really still can't tell those lightest stages of sleep from exactly when it switches to awakening. And that makes it then hard to study these little fluctuations uh, uh, in consciousness. So you're saying it's difficult to define where the dream is, where real life begins? Right. Right at that borderline, it's very fuzzy. Uh, and so some people then want to maintain control. Um, they're a little afraid to let go. Um, they want, you know, because we are, we are losing control of our, quote, mind at that particular point. I'm Jane Gackenbach, and I'm a professor of psychology. So does everyone dream differently, or are there universal yeah. themes that people tend to dream about? Oh, sure. Um, flying is a really common one, and what's in, 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 like Superman flying. And what's interesting about it is virtually cross-culture, it's fun, it's uplifting. It, it's a positive, it's versus falling, another universal dream theme, uh, which sucks. Nobody really likes to fall in a dream, although very, very common. A really common one, although I think probably maybe more in, in North America, is being caught without your clothes on in some compromising situation. Um, the uh, chasing, nightmare chasing, very, you know, kind of universal. That's so if you, your father's just died and you're dreaming he's still alive and, and, and then he came and visited me and he was in the hospital, you're trying to incorporate those feelings into your memory banks of no, my dad is alive, and that's one of another major function is this memory consolidation, mood regulation. Um, a lucid dream traditionally is called is a dream where you know you're dreaming, okay? Uh, and by that I mean everybody knows they're dreaming once they wake up. Well, you know you're dreaming while you're asleep, okay? Um, now, as to put someone who knew how to lucid dream in a sleep lab, uh, hook them up to the various recording mechanisms. One of them is eye movement. They put electrodes here to measure eye movement. Uh, although you're paralyzed, you can move your eyes under control. In other words, you're, you, if you know, hey, I'm in a dream and I need to signal, you can move your eyes in a way that was prearranged. And so the guy goes to sleep. All the physiological indicates, and it's very easy to identify when someone's asleep and in REM. It's very specific you know, uh, patterns of activity you would look for. So he's asleep, and then you get this, this movement of the eyes, you know, left, right, right, left, or whatever it is. You wake the person up, uh, and you say, what was going through your mind? You don't say, did you have a lucid dream? You don't say, you know, you don't cue them. You try to keep it neutral. I knew I was dreaming. I signaled. Did you get it? Okay, so, and that basically says you can be conscious while well, you're unconscious now. From a neurophysiological perspective, when one enters REM sleep, random signals are received by the brain's cortex. The cortex then attempts to interpret these signals, and this interpretation becomes the dream. This is what allows us the prospect to control the dream by engaging the conscious mind during these neurophysiological chain of events. It's called lucid dreaming. Once someone's aware they're dreaming, they can actively participate in the dream, sometimes even change it. Usually when you're aware that you're dreaming, you wake up, but we have techniques that can train someone to stay in the dream, and with enough practice, one can stay in a dream for an extended period of time. Therapists have been using this skill to help patients with night terrors. So when a patient's in a nightmare, they're trained first to acknowledge that they're in a dream. Then they can change the experience from a negative one to a positive one. It's incredibly powerful once the skill is mastered. So it's really why the military has gotten involved in this research. The military? It took it one step further. If one can actively participate in one's own dreams, what would happen if one could participate in another person's dreams? The military calls this program Project Somnison. And from what I've heard, two or three subjects are able to collectively participate in one dream. So they're sharing. Wasting my time. Omnison is a training machine designed to resolve sleep disorders in the field. 
when engaged in combat, sleep is a rarity. So the quality of sleep becomes extremely important. We train them to get good quality rest. We discovered optimizing REM sleep increases one's survival abilities. That's because the brain during REM sleep is exposed to worst case scenarios. The more REM sleep our soldiers get, the more on their toes they'll be. Sleep management strategies. It's a program designed to keep men and women alive on the battlefield. Spreading this information about what we do. can't do that. I mean, so that there's still, even when you're aware that you're dreaming, you don't necessarily have that ability to make something happen. It, it, the dream is still happening to you. We are caught in our dreams, and that's one of the reasons they can be so horrifying. Uh, we can't move, or we're really frightened, or we see something awful happening to friend, but we have no ability then to change